Well, hello, nerd. If you think that you would be a space marine in Warhammer 40,000 universe, then I got bad news for you, because chances of you becoming one is the same as my chances not to be diagnosed with autism. Slim to none. And it's all because there are untold trillions of humans in the galaxy, and from these trillions, like one million or a bit more are space marines. To become a Startees, you have to go over extensive training and organ implantation surgeries. Today, we will go over all of the firstborn space marine organs, and also additional three more organs that are implanted in Primaris Marines. So let's not waste time and dig in. There is only war. The first organ on the list is the secondary heart, making Space Marine twice as hard to kill since if one heart fails, then the other one takes over. Also, it just helps to carry more oxygen to Marine's brain and muscles. Next one, the third lung, or also known as multi-lung, I believe it has the same reasoning as the secondary heart. Due to them having so many new organs, the original system couldn't handle it, so they kinda needed more power. Also, in poisonous environments, it will close off natural lungs, and it will keep absorbing oxygen without getting damaged, so technically, Astartes can breed poisonous gases, at least at some level. Alright, listen. You will forgive me if I don't pronounce names of these organs properly, firstly, because I'm doing my fucking best here, and secondly, because people think they know how to pronounce them properly when they actually don't. Okay, now since we got that off the table, we can move on. This is where it gets interesting. The third one on the list is Osmodula. This organ is meant to advance skeletal growth, increasing bone density, size, and making sure that Bones absorb ceramic-based chemicals ingested by Marine from his diet. The coolest part about it is that it fuses the ribcage into solid plates of ceramic bone, making sure that the chest cavity is fully protected. This is also one of the reasons why Space Marines are much taller than the regular human. Next one is Bicopia, which is implanted in the chest cavity and is responsible for muscle growth, so that Space Marines become shredded and can rip your arms off. The fifth organ is called, and here it comes, Hamestamen. I guess something to do with hemoglobin or something like that because it's implanted in the main blood vessel. It increases efficiency of the blood, allowing it to carry more oxygen and other important stuff. Basically, it makes space marine blood super blood. Then the follow-up is called Larman's organ, and it looks like a small liver implanted in the chest cavity with a complex system of blood vessels. The organ is responsible for instant scar tissue formation. When a space marine receives a wound, this organ generates special Larman cells, which are sent through blood vessels to the area of injury, instantly clotting the wound. That is the reason why space marines usually don't bleed out even if their arm is ripped off or if their main arteries are cut. Another important organ is called catalepsy and node, which is implanted in the back of your skull by drilling. It is responsible for sleep regulation and allows Marine to be awake for extended period of time by shutting off some parts of the brain allowing them to rest. Because of this organ, Crimson Fist skill team achieved 328 solar hours killing orcs. Meanwhile, I feel like I'm gonna die after a 12 hour gaming session. Umophagia, also known as Remembrancer, is implanted into the spinal cord and then wired into central nervous system. Basically, it allows Astartes to gain access to recent recollection of memories and emotions by eating flesh or tasting blood of any creature. Due to some mutation in this organ, some of the chapters have gained a natural taste for blood and flesh like flesh terrors and blood drinkers. The names of these chapters does really give it away. Then the next organ we have is called Preomnor, which is literally a pre-digestive stomach that allows space marine to digest things that would, well, normally kill a human. Then, number 10, Oculobe. This is an organ that sits at the base of the brain and is responsible for enhanced vision, including night vision. Space Marines have far better eyesight than regular humans and can see in the dark. Number 11 is called Lehman's ear that helps to filter out certain sounds and overall enhances hearing. And not just that, it doesn't allow Astartes to become disoriented or nauseous. Basically, they don't get seasick. Number 12 is a tricky one. It's called Susan Membrane. Not Susan, but Susan. 
It's like a pancake that goes on top of your brain and it allows Marine to go into suspended animation in case of huge physical stress or injuries. Or if the start is strained enough, then he can induce the state willingly. Only problem is that it's like a one-way street. They can induce it, but they can't pull themselves out of it only with the proper technique can they be revived. Astartes in this state can survive even for years with grievous injuries, so it can be handy at some situations. Next one on the list is Melanchrome, which monitors radiation and light waves bombarding skin, and if need be it will darken the skin to protect it. That's why Astartes from Salamander's chapter have jet black skin due to the high levels of radiation on their homeworld Nocturne. Another really important organ is Oolitic Kidney which is heart-shaped organ and its primary function is to modify and improve circulatory system to enable other implants to be effective. In case of poisoning, this implant works together with the secondary heart to filter blood very quickly. Space Marine becomes unconscious during this process, but I guess that's a small price to pay for survival. Neuroglottis is another interesting implant. It literally allows Marine to assess what's in their food by taste also, as weird as it sounds, but with the help of this organ they can track their target. Kind of like smell of blood. Bear with me, we are closing to the end. Now, Mucranoid. Mucranoid. Whatever. This organ is kind of like extra sweat glands and helps Marine to develop a natural cleansing substance that coat their skin. This helps with severe changes in temperature and even in vacuum of space. Next one you're gonna love. It's called Becher's Gland. It turns Astartes into spitting cobra. This implant literally allows Marine to spit acidic poison. In the information that I found, it is stated that the Astartes can chew through prison bars within an hour. Obviously, I have questions like, is it corrosive to your teeth and how does it affect your skin? But honestly, I don't have an answer for that and I think no one does. So, still pretty cool though. The reason why Astartes are so agile in their power armor is because of black carapace. This implant is like an attachment to the skin, and it is connected to the marine's nervous system allowing him to interact with his armor like second layer of skin. Honestly, without this implant the armor is kinda useless and makes you just a slow target. The last and the most important of the original organs are progenoid glands. This is the most important organ because it collects information about space marine's organs to create gene seed. Gene seed is what makes space marine, well, a space marine. It is used to make all types of previously mentioned organs and without it Astartes would just die out. Every space marine receives two of these and one of them is removed after about five years and the other one only after the death. It is chapter's apothecary's duties to harvest these glands from their brothers, otherwise without gene seed they won't be able to grow any more new organs, their chapter won't be able to make new space marines and they will just cease to exist. Now the next one is really interesting, Primarchs, the ones from which all the Astartes were created had this thing called the Mortis Gland, also known as Godmaker, and basically Belisarius Kahl, creator of Primaris Marines, was able to replicate the right side of it, but not the left side, so it's kinda incomplete, but still, if it's implanted in Astartes brains, this thing will boost their growth and organ functions beyond even already supernatural levels. That's why, for example, Primaris are much taller and more durable than regular Space Marines. This organ is called Magnificent or Amplifier, and it is implanted in the core of the brain. Finally, the last one, the 22nd organ, Belisarian Furnace, is connected to the both hearts and in time of huge stress and physical trauma, it provides Primaris with combat stamps helping them survive and fight on even in situations where the firstborn Marines would be killed. Alpha Legionnaire shot one of the Primaris Imperial fists in the head, the dude just got back up and kept on shooting, so yeah, these guys are tough. Look, this is a lot of information. I know your brain is kinda melting, but if you enjoy such content then please consider leaving a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know in comments down below what is the next topic you would like for me to discuss. But for now, I'll see you next time, nerd.